previously on Dog Times Productions. So now that $200 pixel remap magically transformed into a $1,900 repair estimate. Here we go, this is a quick one for all of my fellow digital babies. And if you're new to the analog film world like I am, uh, my mind was blown by the film lab today. So the whole point of this video is to talk about how you can actually salvage a roll of film. So for instance, I had a roll of Kodak Portra 400 in here and I shot about 15 to 16 exposures when I realized something was wrong with this camera because I had the lab call me. Uh, we'll circle back around. Let's put a pin in that and let's just rewind a little bit because I wanna give you some context, some backstory to this. And the whole reason I have this M6 is because I did a trade. I swapped out my M8 for this M6, a clean trade. And the only thing that was wrong with it was the exposure counter was broken. It wasn't telling me how many exposures it had taken. And I knew this when I did the trade. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't wanna test my patience and my anger issues driving all the way out to the west side to the normal service tech that I go to. Shout out to Steve's camera. He's who CLA'd all of my Minolta Rocor lenses, all of my Leica R lenses. But I was being lazy, so I went to a service tech that was closer to me. He's not actually licensed or certified by Leica. <laughs> uh, that's my own fault, right? I took my chances. So I left him my camera. I told him that, you know, the only thing that was wrong with it, and he even checked it. He checked everything out. He had my camera held hostage for three weeks when he said it would only take him a week. Anyways, uh, when I go to pick it up three weeks later, yeah, the exposure counter was working, but now the meter wasn't working. So while fixing the counter, he broke the meter. <laughs> And I still had to give him 145 bucks. Okay, I don't wanna throw him under the bus too hard. I'm not gonna reveal who it is, but I was like, whatever. I just, I literally had a shoot that day. I wanted to go shoot the rally happening down at the federal building. So if you follow me on Instagram, at Kid Tech, yeah, that's what I did. I took my M10, I had the 75 mil F2.5 Voltlander on my M10, and then I had the 35 mil Leica Summicron version four on the M6. In the M6, I popped in a fresh roll of Ilford, that's black and white film, and I shot the whole roll of black and white on the M6, and I dropped in a fresh roll of Kodak Portra 400. Shot about 15 or 16 exposures, like I said at the beginning of this video. And then I got a call from the lab about that time, and they said, hey, so we're going through this roll of black and white that you dropped off here, and we're pretty sure something is seriously wrong with your camera shutter. <laughs> I said, well, what's going on? They said, well, only six of the pictures came out and they're pretty, like, they're pretty crunchy. They're pretty underexposed. And the rest of them, uh, none of them came out. And I said, well, what you, did I just like severely underexpose the whole roll? I mean, it's very possible the meter was broken, you know? And they said, no, 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 we definitely know there's something wrong with the shutter because the middle of the image is completely black. We can see the edges of all the frames, but we can't see the middle. So the timing of your shutter is off. Something's broken on your shutter. I said, oh boy. So now it's clear to me, this guy <laughs> that fixed the exposure counter did way more damage than just breaking the meter, right? So now I was like, oh my God, dude. And keep in mind, this is an M6 classic. This specific one was made in 1985. So I was already worried that there's no longer parts for the meter in here. So now I had issues with the shutter. Now we're all caught up, right? So I was like, shoot. I only had a third of that Portra 400 uh, exposed, so I just hit the rewind button, I rolled it up, I said, whatever. And then I took it over to Steve's camera in Culver City, and then he showed me, <laughs> because he has one of these taken apart for display, and he showed me on the inside, the exposure counter is connected to the shutter, it's connected to the shutter release, it's also connected to the meter. So it's all one piece, it's all connected. So if you don't know what you're doing and you think you're fixing one thing, but it's, when you're doing that, you're clearly breaking everything else that it's connected to, which is what happened with this other guy. And he looked at me, Steve looked at me and said, did he, did he charge you? <laughs> I said, yeah, 145 bucks. And he just shook his head and looked down at the ground. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh no, then you know you're in trouble. But Steve being Steve, man, within a week, he had this thing pristine, tip top shape. He had the meter fixed. The shutter was working again. The, the exposure counter was working. And he even did a, what they call the MP upgrade. So now I have the um, nice new fresh rangefinder window that's on the newer MP cameras. So it doesn't have a wicked glare issue, which a lot of the older M6 classics have. But however, I still had that roll of Kodak Portrait 400 where I thought, well, you know, 20 exposures I just lost. Since I got it back from Steve's, I shot a whole roll of Phoenix 200. And I also shot a whole, a whole nother roll of Kodak Portrait 400. So when I go back to the lab 
the drop off the Phoenix and the new full roll of Kodak Portrait, I had that little half roll with me. I asked him, if there is there any way to salvage this roll? <laughs> this is where all of my hardcore film guys are gonna call me an idiot and laugh and stuff. I had no clue of this. So if there's any uh, other, you know, digital babies like myself, you know, I grew up in the digital world. I don't have a whole lot of experience shooting film. He asked me, he goes, well, how did you pop the film out? Did you just pop it out? And I said, no, 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 I wound it. And you know, just like I shot the whole thing. And he said, well, yeah, you, you can totally do it. And he, he he popped the film a little bit and he pulled a little bit of it out like it would look when you first get a fresh new roll. And he goes, just go home, pop this in your camera, put your body cap on or your lens cap, it doesn't really matter. And then just to be safe, you know, set your shutter speed to like the fastest it'll go. So on the M6 Classic, that's one over 1000. And he goes, uh, and then just start firing the shot and watch your counter. If you remember it was 15 or 16 exposures, just shoot those blanks, ba 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 all the way up until you hit exposure 17. You can expose the rest of that roll. And in my head, being a digital baby, I'm like, what? I was like, won't it, won't it like overwrite the, the, those 15 or 16 shots and won't it turn them black because the body cap's on? And he's like, no, dude, it's film. He's like, you need light to expose. He goes, you could take a whole fresh roll of film, drop it in your camera, and if the lens cap is on and, and you know, you're just ba 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 you could shoot the whole roll and you'd bring it to me to the lab and it would the entire roll would be transparent. I'm going, oh, wow, it was such a mind blown moment. We know if I take my M10 and I take a bunch of shots with the body cap on, you're gonna have black exposures <laughs> because the body cap's on. So it was just like, wow, I know that's a completely dummy thing, but if there's anyone else out there as new to film as I am, I thought maybe you'd like to know that. You can salvage your roll. Uh, it's also fun if you wanna do double exposures, right? Like I thought of that, I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I do plan on doing a review of the Phoenix 200 uh, because that's this weird new film. It's kind of punchy, you know, shout out to Jason Lee at Eagle Rock Camera. I've been there a few times. I love going there. He's He seems to always be there when I go in to buy something. He even has uh, ran the register one time, but he always uh, talks to everyone. It's amazing, amazing, cool dude, super laid back. And I asked him, uh, you know, I'm looking for something really funky. And that's when he showed me that Phoenix 200. Did shoot a whole roll of it for the documentary series that I've been working on. So again, uh, for those of you that don't know, I got a whole nother documentary documentary channel that I am in the works of launching. And shout out to all of you that already subscribed because uh, last I checked, we already have around 40 subscribers. I put two little uh, YouTube shorts over there just to kind of have something over there. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, they're also on the Instagram as well. Again, and there's a whole new Instagram to go along with the channel. It's called at local calls photo. And the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash at local calls photo. And I'll have links to both of those down below uh, because it's completely different. It's a com it's just gonna be completely documentary. No talking head, no showing how the sausage is made, right? That's what this channel is for, right? And, and I'm taking the show on the road. For those of you who don't know, my wife and I are hitting the road and we're seizing life by the balls, as they say, I guess, and but also taking the opportunity to, to create something while we're out there. And each episode is going to be a new city within our beloved country. Okay, so uh, look out for that episode. Episode one is Echo Park. It's a really eccentric, really cool city uh, that l a lot of non-Los Angelinos don't really acknowledge or know about. So I think it'll be interesting to see. It's just all about community. You know, it's all documentary too. And it's an interesting way to showcase um, B-roll, an interesting way to showcase a community, an interesting way to showcase the people that live there, the businesses, just the everyday life there, you know. It's not just about street photography, you know, just an interesting kind of abstract documentary piece. So if you're a documentary, uh, I think you'd be into it. If you're into kind of, you know, just cinematography of cool new places, you'd be into it. Cause I have been shooting Super 8. So I picked up a Super 8 camera. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I picked up the Lykina Super RT1 and I've been shooting with that. And uh, of course I'm always shooting on the Sony FX30 with the big Sony servo zoom, my favorite lens of all time uh, that I've done a full video on the, the 28 to 135. So I'm kind of shooting all mediums the M10 with the M6. And because I started working on this episode way back in January, there's even stuff with the RX1 R Mark II and the M8. And so that's kind of all over the place and a lot of interesting audio being captured as well. So I don't know what to say, just check it out. And for all of my film uh, aficionados, the pros out there, I hope you had a good laugh out of this. Okay, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. If you're new here, please consider tapping that subscribe button because things are gonna get a lot different here. This world, I'm leaving this office that I've been living in for, I don't know, well over seven years now. Uh, we're getting out of here and it's gonna be on the road. So it should be interesting. This channel will continue to do some interesting, fun reviews, talk all kinds of whatever nonsense we talk about cinematography lighting 
photography, everything we do, but also it'll be an interesting kind of behind the scenes of how uh, we're making this crazy documentary that we're doing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then on the, on the flip side of that, my wife is gonna be doing a whole nother different kind of series of her own about the RV life and living in an RV while trying to, you know, create some some art, some documentary, if you will. So <laughs> there'll be all these weird little channels around going on. I don't know exactly what we're doing, but <laughs> we, we got a little bit of an idea of it, but I think it's much like my life. It just kind of evolves as we go. And uh, th that's the fun thing about it. Um, I, I don't like to sit stagnant and that's really what it boils down to. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> if you're new here, you're like, holy cow, what's going on? Uh, I appreciate you watching the whole video and um, we'll see you whenever we see you. Maybe by the time you see me, uh, maybe we'll already be out of here. We only got a couple weeks. The, the deadline is on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They have awesome drag races here in Glendale. It's so cool. And they race right here where little kids run and play. It's so awesome. It's so, so cool. It's so, it really shows the size of the genitalia of, I mean, if you really want to show off, like, uh, you know, and be really cool and let the world know how tiny your member is, just come out here and drag race in Glendale where all the kids play.